came over on Friday and he said, it's got to be in there. And we tore the tile out and the concrete backer board out. And when he got the nipple out of the plumbing and I cleaned it up, I could hold it up and see the yeah. pinhole. Water can travel, like you said. That way. Mm. Seeks to release resistance. Mm. Water seeks release resistance to markets. Well, this wicking was done. Anyway, that's all I have. It's, it's in that racket. Is he photos of it? Yes. Right. What did your insurance company say? I didn't call them. Uh, to the act of God, little pinhole that's an act of God. <laughs> Things happen. Yeah. So you have to re re back and board, retile, blah, blah, blah. I worked on it yesterday and today and wanted to make certain and a plumber friend said, don't do anything for a week. Make certain that it's That's the real problem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Don't be in a hurry. Yeah. And put it all back together and then it starts you know, leaking again. You have one of those oh shit moments <laughs> when it starts leaking again. Yeah, he, he said, you know, this valve is forty two years old. The war the walls torn up. The time to replace it is, is now. now. Well, you want a pressure balancing valve anyway, so that's code now. That's code. Mm -hmm. Well, not only that, but it helps you from getting scalded when somebody flushes the car. Taking all the fun out of it. I really <laughs> mm. missed that. Though. I'm sorry. No, I didn't realize. <laughs> That was uh, <laughs> that a was source of entertainment. Of entertainment. Yeah, entertainment. Yeah. You get a little nothing, got nothing there. But just, just one more comment on that. It's nice to have a master plumber as a friend who spent four and a half hours at my house. And his total bill, including the balancing bill, was $300. That's yeah, I guess that's. That's an act of God. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> when well, he was working, he was probably stymied for a while, wasn't he? If it weren't, it, it probably would have been, with his time, uh, probably would have been close to grain. Mm -hmm. Question Has he seen it before? Hmm? Has he seen this before? No, he had never seen it before. Okay. So, what damage a little pinhole after rubbing for 30 years meant to have? Had a, all these comp, these events came together for a perfect storm for a big mess in your floor. Anytime you have the walls over, open, replumbing is a good plan. Yeah. Yeah. And rewiring if you've got exposed wiring to. Especially this time of year, wanted to dry out all the humidity in there. You could be sealing in all. Mildew mill possibilities. Cool. Mold. I'm Kenny. I'm here. I'm Marcus. Let's see. I got a presentation update on my IoT project. I started a year ago. So, I also talk about the website real quick. I, uh, Leroy, we talked about putting our uh, public facing website and also basically our whole existence on Wix. Dot com and it seems it seems to be I think uh, I think I think Leroy found it and, and sort of pushed it over to me a little bit but I pushed back and said okay you need to set up an email address he set up the email address also gave me uh, permission to go into it that seems to work okay okay yeah it seems that seems to work okay yeah you, I, you have full admin rights except for like two or three things yeah that, the only thing I didn't I got concerned about originally is that I couldn't go in and create a new website. You know, yeah. I can create multiple because it's going to be a lot of trial and error. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what I did is just I went on and recreated over the one that was that you started. I started there, and then then I'll that's, I'll I'll work out offline and. That's what I was kind of hoping you would do. Yeah. <laughs> it it forced me to when I set up the new account. It said you have to set up a website, and I'm like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
And so, and the thing about it is, is that you have the ability to go in and, and sort of not do the whizzy wig stuff. In other words, sort of work on your own. But I really don't want. We don't, really don't want to do that. We don't want to put that much onus on ourselves. To you know, that anytime you make a modification, it becomes a you know you have to be a web designer and all that stuff. So they have a lot of tools in there. So I'm pretty much staying within their border. So I didn't work on it a lot this week so much because I was I spent a lot of time getting ready for which what you guys are gonna see later is an update on my IoT project. So anyway, I'm Marcus Davis. <laughs> And that's it. Yeah, oh, y'all already went. Oh, okay. Well, how about I just Last go to my it's your turn. project? So, <laughs> as I was saying, about a year ago, it's a little longer than a year ago, I came in here with this design, and the per and number one, I, I guess I had, this is about a year and a half ago when I actually joined the group. And so shortly after that, I came in with this design saying, okay, I gotta find some way to get, keep myself motivated in a certain direction. Yes? Is that what you wanted up there? Ah, why is that not? That's a good question. Did you do the tab? Yeah, I did. Uh, is it another tab? I don't think so. Did you lose connection? Oh, maybe I lost, maybe I lost it. Um. As far as I'm concerned, you didn't. didn't. Okay, let me go. Let's see. Did you, you select do the whole, whole screen? I think that. It looks like the whole screen. Yeah. Is, I've got his little windows. Nope, those are my windows. Okay. I don't know. Stop, let me stop it and just reconnect that. Okay, so source. Chance desktop. Right, I did. Yeah, I did desktop. Okay, and then just click on that. It blew up. Ah. Now see, mine makes me do this. So I'm not sure if that was the issue. So I have to actually click a click click in there. Entire screen. Does a pumpkin turn orange? Try share. Yeah, I need to share. And so okay, let's four. see what it does. So that's part of it, but I want this here. So that's there. That worked last time too. So if I go to the next, which is I mean this is all PowerPoint, so it should it shouldn't care. <coughs> go here. Okay, see it's not checked. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let's see if it'll go to the next screen now. Well, we okay, cool. There we go. Okay, so as I was saying, so over a year year ago I decided to create this big design thing that sort of keeps me on track because as Leroy knows is that those shiny objects get in your way a lot of times when you're doing this stuff. You, you start down one road and all those things, oh, this looks more interesting. So, Squirrel. Yeah, exactly. Squirrel, yeah. <laughs> uh. and, and so I wanted this in some way to keep me like focused on the, the Internet of Things part of the project. So I created this big project. but. Ultimately, we're going to look at that project, and you know, some of the stuff as the people who's been here often is will some of it will be you've know, seen before. But uh, I, what I really want to do is to show that I sort of put things in place in my quote unquote smart home. I put things in place, and you know, some things you start to find out that okay, either, either like Wi Fi doesn't quite work down in the basement as well. You know, so you find out these little, you know, you know, little idiosyncrasies once you put the things in place and you have to sort of work around and we'll see a few of those. So the first thing we'll look at the ILT project design that I put together, just a quick little brief slide of that. Then let's see, can I see see I know that moves really slow. Don't don't watch that screen, watch your screen. Okay. <laughs> Let me see if it's there. Okay, you're right. Okay, so <laughs> so, so so we'll go to the I, the IoT devices, which actually be we'll show did, did the die devices. Again? No, I think we're okay. Okay. Uh, I think yeah, we're okay. And then I'll show you where I did basically deploy each one. I, I, the mouse it goes away if I keep it still for a while; it sort of disappears. Okay. And then I I actually use this sort of text to speech module, which I actually showed it here, and it became a real neat tool to use as a functional testing to make sure everything is working. I will show you two automations that I put in place that I've actually talked about here. Then we'll go through the project. Stand I, I tried to standardize on a lot of project, a lot of components when I first started out. And we'll talk about random thoughts and they'll say, okay, where do I go next? 
So with that, let's get started. So this was the design I showed. I'm, I'm not gonna blow it up or anything, but this is the design. Each one of the little microprocessors or, or microcontrollers actually show a, a different type sensor. And so some of the stuff changed, just one little point. This little thing right here, this I, I started, when I started the project, this actually exists, and then I'm sort of circling it. You can see me circling. Yeah. yeah. It actually went away. It was called Happy Something, but the, the guy who was creating the thing sort of decided that you know he didn't want to do it anymore, so it went away, and I had to, you know, again, that's what happens when you go in you know, design, all of a sudden something disappeared, you gotta find something else that works for you. So anyway, that, that, that was just one of the issues that occurred, among other things. So anyway, that's my house, and so, yeah, my house. Okay, so I'm gonna go through each, and these little arrows, it sort of points in the direction where the sensors are, so you can see I got a lot of sensors now. Okay, so the first four sensors I actually have, I have one in each automobile, my wife's automobile and my automobile, there's a beacon, and uh, that beacon is actually, this beacon is actually one of the ones I showed you before, you'll see it in the picture, it's like, it's a, uh, it, it's called a RAD beacon by a, a company called, uh, oh, come on, you can do it, Radius, Radius Networks. So I bought those beacons and, and interfaced them to a, a, a Raspberry Pi. But then I also have a the LoRa beacon. So anyway, this is part of the, uh, you know, you'll see that's part of the automation. It, it's, it allows me to, to, to detect when a car is actually a, a few feet away from the house. In the garage, there is a, uh, there is a, a mailbox, for the mailbox, there's an ESP now hub. And the reason I use the ESP now, with, again, with people that's been around, is that anytime I use a battery, you know, want to use a battery uh, device, I use the ESP now because that allows me to, to not use that wireless. And when you're using wireless, it just drains the batteries like you wouldn't believe. So, so anyway, have, and I also have in the, in the garage, there's a motion detector. So if you walk in my garage, it'll, you'll, it'll, it'll indicate that, actually I just have like a little, uh, what was that thing, little buddy, little buddy talker in the garage. So it'll say intruder alert or something crazy like that when someone walks in the garage. I know I'm, I know I'm crazy, but hey, it's fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so then and on, the, uh, on the garage door, I also have a relay that can actually, can, and you'll see the, what I actually had to do with the uh, little uh, the little relay buttons, the buttons to, to uh, control the garage up and down. So I actually put relays on those and went in and modified those so I could actually control the garage doors. Of course, I have to have sensors to let me know when the garage doors are open or not. And then moving down here, I have, let's see, garage, oh, I also put, and I brought it in here at one point, you'll, and again, you'll see a picture of it. So this is, you'll see the picture of the actual uh, component once we get out, I'm just doing an overview. But uh, to, I can control both of the garage lights and also the driveway lights. Uh, outside, there is a sensor, believe it or not, you'll love this, Leroy, is that I, my, actually my wife actually gets a transplant medication and uh, they deliver it on the front porch of our, on, on our stoop and it just, just drives me nuts that they deliver it there. And so I got a sign out there to tell it, it's, I, I made a drop box around the corner in front of the garage so they can put it in there because it, it if I'm not home and that when the wind blows, they're gone. Yeah. And they they just don't weigh much, and it just it. Oh, I, I talked to them, but they they still put it they still put it out there, rain and snow, whatever. It's still so it's it's a drop out. box. This is just a box. There's a slot in it. You'll see it. Yep, yeah, you will see it. In, you will see it in a minute. Okay. And uh, also on the on the mailbox, we and I also brought this in on the mailbox. There is a, a open sensor on the mailbox. Again, that's battery operated also. So. I won't go through all of these, but uh, it, that basically, let me go to the basement. The basement there is actually a daylight, a, a day and night sensor. So in other words, is this, I, I look at this as sort of like a, uh, uh, what's it, what they call it, the central nervous system. The central nervous system, so so the system knows if it's night or day, just like you do. <laughs> and so, it, so I have that down in the basement. I also Sometimes. have, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And so I also have a sensor down there with the temperature and humidity and also a light sensor to determine if the, uh, the light is on in the basement. It just drives me crazy when I, if I wake up in the morning and I left the lights on downstairs because 
in its most basic, you have so many bulbs, and you know, it's like, oh, I, I just, I just lost twenty five cent electricity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So my wife didn't care. I care. You know, it's yeah. like she, I'm going to need really that. So let's see what else is interesting here. Oh, my my tub overflow sensor. And that, and I think I, I, I brought that up before. My one, my wife one time uh, went up and started the tub. She she's a bathtub person, so she taught her started the tub. And comes downstairs. We're sitting there watching TV, and all of a sudden. What is that noise? I, I knew it was water, but I thought it was the TV, actually. I mean, I really thought it was the TV. I looked at the TV, oh, that's nothing. I was like, oh, shit. And she said, she, she jumps up and starts running. Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. You, you're talking about, I mean, yeah, we had, to, we had to tear a lot of stuff, by the way. So, so now I have a sensor up there that actually, you'll see the sensor. I have a sensor there that will actually, it'll, once it gets to that point, it'll, it'll Actually, it goes off audibly, and also it, it'll 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 uh, I got a little uh, uh, indicator screen that'll come up on the screen or something if I'm sitting in front of the computer. But anyway, so and also these I have these present beakers, these presence beaker beacons. I have one of my on my keys. Uh, see, I'm oh, gonna see a picture of it. I got one of my keys. I got one of my little doggy. You'll see a picture of my doggy. You guys will say, "Oh, you're cute." <laughs> yeah, uh, then I have one on what I you guys see it coming in here as my what I call my man purse. Uh, it's like one of those man purse. So <laughs> so and, and it's actually one on my laptop right here. So that's a beacon. It's actually sending out. It's it's beaconing now, but of course it has to have a hub to, to, to pick it up. So anyway, so that's the overview, and then we'll go sort of get into everything now. So is it a transponder? It it's it's. When you say transponder, it's it's just one direction. It's not trans. It's just it's like a beacon. It's it's constantly sending out. I can determine. So it has a battery in it. It has a battery. It has battery in it, and it's and it's, and it's Bluetooth low energy. So you which know, makes okay. so typically that they that should you can you can adjust the power out and also the the rate. So I always set it at pr pretty much the lowest rate, which is uh, every once one second. I mean you can have it going. Uh, ten times a second, and uh, you can also adjust the power to uh, from minus three dB to three dB dBm. So it, it so you have some control over how fast it drains actually drains the battery. So anyway, in the garage we have this. I have hubs all over the place, and and guys, everybody feel comfortable with a hub. I, I didn't really think about this. A hub basically translates some signal. I mean, in, in this case, I'm tr we're translating from from LoRa, from the LoRa signal to a Wi-Fi signal, because everything that I'm receiving is it has to be go to Wi-Fi eventually. And then I so this hub actually picks up the two cars, so it picks up the, the beacon that's actually in each car. And this hub right here is actually the ESP Now hub that actually picks up the mailbox. So it's actually only pur only purpose in its life is the to, 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 to communicate with the mailbox and again you know and again the only reason the reason why you do that is because ESP now is just just a, just not power hunter. it just it'll it'll allow you to run the batteries for I mean, I don't even know, years <laughs> so so it's battery operated it's no, it doesn't have power this, at all? this right here has power actually these two have power and they're actually uh, uh, they're actually hooked up in the garage however the mailbox right. the mailbox sensor is a, is a battery. It's a, and, I'll sh and I'll show you what how that, what that sensor looks like. So in other words, the the, the two hubs are in are independent, and they have uh, one ten power to them. Uh, they actually have. They actually are going into a, a, a micro USB port, so they actually have five volts connected to them. Okay. And, and I'll show you with that. Uh, actually, what happens is is that. You know how the, the in the garage openers up here, and it has a in, and they, they install a, a, a two uh, outlet strip. So I bought these little strips, the little outlet plugs that actually have USB connectors in them. So and I, I got a picture of that too. Oh, yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah. yeah, and so we have a, the, this is the motion detector in the garage, and it just sits on the wall against the wall, and when someone comes in, it sends a signal out. So these are the two, of course, my garage door openers, and what I did is that. These are this box just basically has uh, two relays in there, and then so I just interface that 
button basically went across the button in parallel and, and, and turn the garage around. Oh so, yeah, so uh, so that's what those that contr actually controls the garage door. So I can actually con remotely control the garage doors. Uh, this sensor here is these sensors here are wired up to uh, to uh, what we call read relays that are actually not relays but the relay uh, read sensors that are hooked to the garage and the magnetic, you know, just like or any window sensor, basically. So those two connections right here are going from each garage door. This, which I brought in before, these are, this is actually a modification of the uh, uh, Sonoff little uh, a AC, uh, AC uh, switches. And I wish I would show the back end of that, but I didn't. But they actually, I brought these in here at one point, and, and what happens now, so I, I replaced the two switches that turns on the, the lights for the garage and the light for outside in the driveway. So these are actually, so you have to hold these buttons down for my wife, she just didn't want to do that. She did not, it's like all you have to do is just push the button, hold it for a half a second, and it, and it comes on. And so, and what I also did is that there's a little LED in that little device, so you can actually see when it's actually on. That's kind of neat because, so I can actually walk past it and then see if the light's on and out, and out in the driveway, for example. So that's sort of a modification. It's actually been working really well. I'm, I'm surprised. I was thinking, okay, what happens when they stop working? Are I going to do the, um, take the whole thing out or <laughs> reboot it? <laughs> so uh, let's see. So the next thing. Oh, there's the box. Okay, so here's the box I came up with, and it just turned out I had wood around, and I said, oh, okay, I'll make a box. So this is so this box actually is is you know, notice I have the Federal Express, UPS, and actually Amazon. I should have said China Made too or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Dropbox. Yeah, that's the Dropbox. So this this lid actually opens, and also this actually opens for bigger things. So it's a ledge, little ledge in here actually. And what I did, I said, okay, I'm gonna have to put two switches there. But what I decided to do, this is actually a motion detector right here, and this is actually where the dome of the motion detector is right here. And so it can, it'll actually sense either or. So if the if the bottom door is open, it'll sense that, or if the the, the uh, top, you know, drop down is, it'll sense that. So that's that's the ledge right here. So I I modified that. That was an after effect. So I modified that, and cut that slot out. So so I could actually sense both the top and the bottom of the thing. So, and on that mailbox, it is, so on the mailbox, the sensor is actually positioned under here, and that's all, it's battery, battery operated. So the mailbox sits out here, and this sensor right here, and then up here you can see, right here is where the mailbox, the door is, and this is, a, this is one of those little reed, uh, reed switches. And then it's a magnet actually on the door. So that that's is. inside the mailbox? This is out, no, it's outside. It's actually underneath the mailbox. Yeah. It's actually underneath the mailbox, right. So it's actually. But there's a platform in the bottom of the mailbox, and then there's an open area underneath yeah. that, mm. typically. Yeah, yeah so, I, so we're looking at the bottom. Of I mean, uh, so it's between that horizontal board and. Right. And the bottom yeah, the exactly, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, what are you, so what are you trying to determine whether you got mail or dip? Exactly. Yeah, it determines whether it, when the when it opens up, it triggers it. And, and what I have in the in the code that's running in the background, once it opens, I get an announcement in the house that it, that it happened. Then every half an hour, it goes through this cycle and says, "You may have mail. You may have mail." So that's every half an hour. I'm surprised my wife don't make me shut that off. Until you reset it. Until and it actually and it actually resets itself at eight o'clock, eight p.m. It just resets itself. You, you message me, you may have a stolen mail. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It opened and gets open again. So you, my you, experience is so one o'clock in, in the morning. <laughs> three o'clock in the morning, one o'clock yeah. in the morning. Okay, here's one of the got you guys. This is good because, okay, so I put this motion detector out on my, on my deck. Okay, first I placed it one place and I have these plants out there and of course, it, that drove me crazy. Yeah. So, so yeah, exactly. So I was like, okay, dike on it. Duh. And so, so then I moved it so it's actually positioned directly across from the patio door. Okay, so if someone's standing at the door, you come out the door, it sense. However, that wasn't good enough. So I found the little, you see this little cone thing around? <laughs> yeah. so, so we did, we did a directional sensing. <laughs> it's like that worked perfect. 
because it, it actually, that actually points it directly toward the door. So I just cut the bottom out, glued it on there. It's like, okay, got it. <laughs> got it. So I mean, that's actually what I wanted. That's actually why I wanted to put things in place because I knew this would happen. You start finding out things that, oh, that's not working. Oh, that's not working. So you have to either redesign something. So, so what are your what dog it? set? Was the dog set that off? Get the dog will, and that's actually a good thing because that's somebody you. That's right. You have that. That's right. That's actually a good thing because we have the same problem. Our dog will sit there and he'll be out there all day. Will not make a work. Will not do a sound. He'll be just like. Okay. They'll come get me one day. One day we like turn the lights off, go upstairs, and go to bed. Oh, he's still in there. <laughs> so, so that's actually a good thing that I actually will sense the dog is sitting down. Because what happens, we usually let the dog out the garage and he goes up front. Unfortunately, actually, I used to hate this. He will actually poop on the on the uh, concrete on the oh, drive. God. He starts on the grass and then he finally ends up on somewhere on the on the driveway or on the sidewalk. But the good thing about I can find it. I just go and poop, scoop, and scoop it up. You know, yeah, I just can't leave it out there too long for the neighbors when they come walking by. So, could you clean up your dog? So, uh, so the sensor is, is to the purpose of that sensor. Is <laughs> it's, it's it's just an intrusion sensor more so than anything. I mean, it's just really something to do. So, it's pointing at the siding grass doors, is basically. Yeah, exactly. So, if someone it's comes is is and actually you'll see in the automation if someone comes to that to the door, and it's it's at night. It'll actually turn the family room lights on. So it's a, so it's a, it's a, and it also it also every time someone goes past there, you'll you'll hear you hear an audible sound. It'll say you know someone's on the uh, something on the back deck door or something like that. Something like but that. But it doesn't see through the glass. No, it won't. It will not. It will not. Have you ever tried that? No. It will. What is it? is it a PIR? Yeah. Okay. It will. Yeah. It will. It will not see through the glass because actually I I I was trying to test it. And I, you know, open the screen door up and left the glass so I could test it, so I could go here if it was really working or not. And it, 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 it didn't see through the glass. I was surprised. I that was, makes sense. Yeah, doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was because it's not heat. It's it actually senses. That it's because it, it, that has that little. Uh, I don't know what you, what you call that little crystal thing yeah. on the thing, and and it, it basically what detect it, it's supposed to detect differences yeah. between yeah. So you would think, uh, yeah, I would, I would have but thought. it's looking at really long wave IR. Yeah, um, yeah, so right. It's not looking at near IR. Right. It's looking at so when you th you think the you think the glass depletes glass that? The glass is completely opaque in those wave. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, good point. So, yep. That's where it makes sense. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Okay. So, cool. Okay, here's all the cell. Okay, this gets crazy here. Okay, this thing down here, the little green thing, that's actually my, what I call the edge device. And if you guys listen to my spiel most of the time, when, when, when the big head people started thinking about uh, Internet of Things, they said, okay, we're going to send all of our data up to the cloud. Everything's going to the cloud. And then all of a sudden, people start to realize that okay, if I send this long, if I send, if I want to, if I want to indicate that that someone's in peril or something, or I want to shut down the machine, I'm sending my data, sensor data, all the way up to the cloud, and then it's coming back and then it's, then it's doing an action. So they came up with this edge devices. So they said, okay, we need to put these th this edge device. We need to put a, a, some smarts down by the sensors. And so that's basically what I mean. It's basically just the 82, you know, it's an 8266 that has the programming and it picks up all the information from all the sensors. And so, and I and I think I'm overtaxing it right now. <laughs> so, it, but it, so what the cool thing about it is, I can split the, I can split off, I can split that off. Uh, so right now I'm doing everything on that one particular thing, but I can easily go to two. And that's what I'm thinking about. Some of the automation part may go to another one, and then this one just actually picks up the statuses and blah, 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 blah. So anyway, this is down here with the speaker. This is actually what's speaker, and I brought that in before, and that's that's the e EMIC 2, which actually announced you guys will hear that. I've got an example of what that sounds like. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's the bathroom sensor here. So we have, it actually works, it actually works well. I got little, uh, what did you call that? Blue magic uh, little gunky things that you sort of stick here that, that allows to keep the wires in place. And I have a it's a reset button here, so it's because it once it once it gets to that point, it, it act, I have an audible in there. It actually starts to beep, so I can sh shut it off there. 
Oh, uh, let's see. Five hundred bones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> My wife said, uh, "Is that gonna shock me?" Uh, I said, "It's batteries." Oh, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't hook it up to one ten. <laughs> so, and this is actually the sensor that when I was when I was telling you guys about the garage. Uh, yeah. Art, when I was showing you about the garage, little push button things that I modify. So, this is that Sonos AC switch, which in this case is hooked to those lamps that are in my family room. So, I just plug them in here and it's hooked to the, hooked to the uh, family room and turn the lamps on and off. Oh, let's see. This sensor over here is actually down in the basement. It's actually pointed, it's a, it's, it has a uh, humidity and temperature sensor and also has a, a, uh, a light sensor or a uh, the photo, photoelectric sensor that actually senses where the, when the uh, lights are on in the basement. So I have that actually mounted, this is actually mounted over, not too far, well, it's not, it's just pointed toward a light. So it actually senses when the light's on. That's really the biggest thing you know, on it. I mean, the farther the temperature go, even though it reports the temperature and the humidity, I don't really care. So, and this right here is actually in the basement also, it's pointed toward a window. And the reason why I put it in the basement is because, I, you know, it's, it's you, you, don't, you really it's that's not affected by other things going on unless I'm just happening to be in a base but I got it pointed out toward the uh, outside window so it's actually face and sort of mounted up against the outside window so it senses whether it's light outside or dark down here I actually brought I think I brought I don't know if I brought that in or not but this is actually the sensor that I hooked to the fireplace you, you showed us a video okay, right yeah now. okay and that so that that turns that will turn the fireplace on or off Okay, sorry guys, it's getting long. Okay, here's the, this is actually the, oh, in the car. yeah, this is in the car. This is the, the LoRa sensor that's in the car, and I actually ha also have a beacon sensor, and I'll tell you the story of why I have two sensors in the car now. <laughs> because it turns out that this is, this LoRa sensor is the one that senses the long distance, of course. It can, it's, it senses, uh, this one actually, even having it, even having it inside the car, it still senses actually before I even get to the driveway. I mean, it's, it, it does a pretty good job. And I have it, you, on this particular process, you can, you can sort of control the, uh, the power a little bit. And this sensor, what happened is, is that it turns out in my car, and I didn't know this, and maybe most cars do that, they actually turn the USB thing off after a certain amount of time. And that makes sense, okay. So it was screwing me. So what happened is because I was going to use the sensor also to indicate that the car is there. And so I actually have part of it. It goes through and it looks at it and says, okay, is the car there, car there. No big deal. I mean, it so I put this sensor. I, I didn't realize that the beacons that I the beacons that I actually put on my keychain could could process in a longer distance. I thought the ones that everything I had read, they were they only had a short distance. And I think one of the things I got hooked up in this mindset that I was trying to determine what room I was in. So what I did is I threw out the, trying to determine what room it is and said, okay, I want to determine. So I turned up the, I turned the, the power up so it was actually penetrate more. And it turns out I can, I can pick up that beacon, this little beacon here, I can pick that up any, almost anywhere in the house. And so it's not a problem picking it up in the garage. So I said, oh, I'll just throw it in there. And, you know, it's like, hey, it's nine bucks. I'll put it in the car, and I can see that the car, the car is actually still there. So, but that's that was the reason why the, I added this extra beacon here. Which is that me or you? No, that's me. Oh, we're still, good. We're oh, good. We're still going. Okay. So any questions about that, guys? I'm, I know I'm boring you to death, but... No, it's pretty interesting. We've got to, we got to redo the bathroom thing. We need ultrasonic, or <laughs> if you're going to use wires, do it on uh, do a floor detector where you see the water on the floor. Why do I want to wait till I get to the floor? <laughs> he doesn't want to wait you that long. You need a wire. You don't need any wire in the bathtub jack. No, that's not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think it's going to electric and a battery is going to have an issue? No, it's just... It's just the look, the uh, aesthetics. Yeah, oh, no, I agree. I, yeah, and there's a yeah. guy in jail Your old lady should be all over you, buddy. Bathroom. No, I agree. No, I agree with that. I agree. And I, I'm... Gant would string me up. I would. Yeah, your, it, your tub it, doesn't it, have an overflow. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I'll... That's eventually what I'm probably going to do. And that's, that's what I'll probably do. But it's like, you know... 
Again, keep in mind that turn the water on faster than the overflow goes. Yeah. 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 Level. You can tell us Where are you going to put the other side? Go to the ceiling? Yeah. 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 But I see the single one that. Will it work with batteries? Yeah. Uh, well, but you, you, what I you have do done is you run a pressure it, uh, sensor once under the bottom every of the five top. minutes or so. Right. And you have to calibrate oh, the pressure sensor to determine exactly which one. Five minutes. Determine the you set it so that when the water gets so deep, right. it's the, the tub flexes. Right. Like it or no, the tub flexes. So even even but then as a lady gets in it and they go. So so what so what what you what you recommend it art is that I that I rip out that I rip out the no 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 no, no <laughs> that I, sounds good I re recommend that you do something a little more subtle than that <laughs> no I know I no but I, I I agree with you I mean I agree it, it's 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 kludgy right now but you know it's where in the bathroom yeah, that's good. I, no, and I'm so and you know. I, frankly, I'm surprised my wife didn't let me get away. With that. <laughs> <laughs> so the truth. She gave you some rope, man. I wish I had that kind. Wait, of wait a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah you know, uh, so you're you're wait, one of her friends, one of her friends will say to her. I know. Yeah. Once, once you're a woman put wires. That's right. Know? Once a woman comes up there and looks at it, that that's gonna be the, that's gonna be the kicker. Yeah. Yeah. And another positive. You're dead. It's over. Electrostatic cleaner in my furnace. It's a pressure switch. And when the water comes up, the pressure in a bubble the bubble tube. Well, it won't necessarily bubble, but it, oh, yeah. it, it will create a pressure because of the depth of the water. It's kind that of like might water work. Too. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like a. <coughs> um, you got time. Okay, good. Yeah, you've got, there's another half hour at least. Okay, all right, we, <laughs> we, should, we should be good. That's good, that's Are good. you publishing a bill of materials for this? I actually have a bill of material for it. I haven't no, published it. No, uh, are you publishing it on the site? I, I have not, but I have a bill of material. If you're because interested. the one thing you've accumulated here is a number of vendors of devices that are very, yeah. And so nobody else has to go and do, do all the research again. Tastes good. That would be very handy. But that would be very helpful. You could publish it in uh, Electronic Magazine, Electronic Illustrator. I'll publish it on it. I'll, I'll we'll we'll figure it out. What are the, uh, yeah. The, your well, once we get the website up, we can, I'll get this. It's going. Your are you edge device, your your have you looked at sure. the 32s, and the ESP 32s? Have yeah, I, I have not yeah. yet. Yeah. 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 And I have not yeah. yet yeah. because yeah. I want to, yeah. I'm just trying to keep my focus. Yeah. But no, I, and that's the, that was part of the standardization that I'll talk a little bit about is that one of the issues is, is that it's, it's, it's so much out there, it's just so easy to get distracted. So what I, I standardized, even though I standardized on the, 80, the ESP 8266, and even though I know. You said use so yeah. much different. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's it starts to maintain. Yeah, and I had, a, actually, I, even on this, and I'll show you guys, I had a PC board made up that I can plug in, so I could go, and one, a good example of that is that when I did the fireplace sensor, I assumed you got to switch on the wall for the fireplace, right? Right. I assumed that that switch was an AC switch. Ah, right. When I opened, so I built the thing up, didn't open it, didn't open the wall up and look at it first. So I built this AC switch. You're ready to put it in, pull it out. It's two wires going to a daggum, you know, regular switch. And I said, Ah, oh, you got to be kidding. So it took me four hours, just four hours. To go redesign the whole thing and make a, re a thing with a relay because I had relays too, so I made a box with a relay in, and boom, and, and I was done. So that's why the standardization it just makes it easier for me to keep going and say, okay, not only do I, I the whole goal of here was to do the IoT project, not necessarily to do all the other stuff that goes with it. Even though, like for example, your project, the thing that you showed. I think it was two weeks ago when you did the little uh, display mm -hmm. and you and also did the over the air update. Oh God, that was so tempting. So <laughs> I actually wrote it down. I said, "Leave my project, could do later." Because I mean, that was it was so intriguing. Now, if I would have diverted to that, yeah. Of course, it never works the first time, so you end up, you know, it's like you end up okay. This only this only takes two hours, and all of a sudden, you know, it's a day later, and you're still screwing. So now, my they they do that. 
Do you want to update? Over the air update? Yeah. Proton? Uh, about about uh, six months ago, you talked Proton? about... Proton? Oh, yeah, the Proton? Yeah. 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 You do all yeah. the updates. Yeah. yeah, did you show that portion yeah, of this yeah, also? I have, I'm not showing it here. I didn't... I didn't okay. But this, I, this I'll, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit. But it was in the SB8266 and using the Arduino IDE, just doing an over the air update. Yeah, and that's one of the things I... It was a breeze. Right, and that's what I haven't done with this, even though I have... So I could have stopped and said, oh, I'm going to go do all the air. And then, and you know that, I mean, we talked about this. What happens is, you know, it's like they say, sometimes you have to shoot the, you know, you have to shoot the engineer and say, okay, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get this thing out the door. We're going to ship it. That's right. Ship and it. And that's, and so otherwise, you, you're always going to be improving. You're always going to be improving. I should have, I, I wanted to do the over the air stuff, but it was like, oh, gosh. Well, yeah, uh, once, once it was, for me, it was like, I haven't done it, I haven't done it, I did it, and it's like, why haven't I done it? Exactly, <laughs> I know. Sometimes it becomes so easy, it's like, wow. But what I would have had to do is to go back and update all these devices. Yeah, yeah, yeah you would have. Yeah. You would have had to have done it's fun. It would have been a lot of work. I get mean, it working first and right. then go back. But I would definitely go to that. I, I, actually, I, 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 and I, I hadn't had anything in the China pipe. So uh, I yeah, wouldn't order like those uh, displays. Yeah, you know how they, the, so they group 10. them together. Yeah. And you have to buy seven, four of them, I think it was. And so I, I got those on order. <laughs> so so February, you have to realize that two days from now, yeah. there's going to be something better. I, oh, they're, yes. they're already it, in. It is. It always they're, is. They're already in. Yeah. It, and if you wait until everything is perfect, you'll you never do it. Yeah, you never do it. Yeah. So. So, okay, oh. so the next thing, so here's all the beacons. Oh, oh. This, I told you, you can say, oh, there's my, there's Noah. <laughs> so I, I put a beacon on Noah. <laughs> he's like, I, he's he not looks happy. So, he <laughs> looks so happy to have that beacon attached <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, you sure you want to do this to me? <laughs> he's like, stay still so I can take your picture. <laughs> it's like, so I got a beacon on my, this is my, my man bag. This is my key. This is different. This was the original beacon that the uh, Radius uh, Network came out with, and then they came out with this better one. And I and I, I mentioned this before is that these are actually supposed to be disposable, but of course I took a razor blade and you know, you know took it apart and it, see, see the and it pops back together. It even pops once you once you cut it apart, it actually pops back. I thought I had to tape it up afterwards. How much? How much it was? They're nine. I think they're nine bucks. Yeah, nine bucks. And they, they weren't very expensive. No, and they're Bluetooth low energy, Bluetooth low energy, so they're, and they, they work pretty good. So I, I like them. So, wait, how old is your dog? Nothing. We already, we already he was a He was a rescue dog, so we're not exactly sure, but we, we've had him for about nine years. He's actually a good dog. I, I always... It's, it's hard to have dogs when you all your kids are grown and gone. Yeah. Because every time you decide to jump up and go somewhere, the dog, you got to figure out what to do with the dog. And it's like, Sandra. You get <laughs> so, so anyway, so here's, here's, so I was telling you that one of the things I found out about going down this road of trying to determine if these beacons and these th different devices are actually working or not was the feedback. Because sometimes they, you know, either program it wrong and it just stops working. So first, I started putting this little on every one of them. It's a little one second heartbeat on every one, so I can go look at it and see the heartbeat. But and then I I created this display that showed okay what the status was. So I think it was Leroy. We started talking about speech modules, and so I, I got a speech module. And so now what I actually do is. I actually can, I can hear it. <laughs> and so what I have doing this, so this is one example. You guys are going to have to be really patient with me on this because it, it didn't, it's kind of slow. But you'll, you'll hear. And this is the status, what actually happens every half an hour. It, it's, it's coming. Hello. The date is Monday, July 2019, and the time is 3.45 p.m. Gotta love a deck talk. <laughs> Where he said that course. And then sometimes hard, and you get to understand just like listening to somebody foreign you. I'll be back. So I'll now, be back. Now it's gonna now it's gonna go through all the statuses of all the sensors. I won't I won't let it play all the way through <clears> just to give you an idea. 
and ultimately I'll change it to just giving me the statuses of the ones that's crazy. Right, it sounds like Stephen Hawking's thing. It does. Well, it, well, yeah. he the actually, garage door he actually is helped open. Design it. The garage door is open. He's shuffling around in the background. But that's that, that's the, the first garage door. Garage door is open. Right. I mean, it's, it's so, it takes a while before. The driveway lights are minus except drop off. See, and sometimes it garbles it. Sometimes it garbles it. What it was going to say. The basement is, temperature is 72.50 degrees. I can live with that. Yeah. <laughs> the basement is at 41.70% relative humidity. The basement yeah. lights are on. The lights are on. <laughs> the lights are on. That's pretty the lights humid. Are on. Did light on side right now? No, it's 42%. Oh, 42. 72.5 temperature. The fireplace is off. Why are they in battery saving mode? Marcus's keys are here. So my keys are here. Marcus's shoulder bag is not here. Marcus's laptop is here. Oh, it's your battery, okay. Oh, it's my battery. <laughs> oh, it's my battery. It's my battery. Marcus's car is in the garage. Why is it telling me this? Laptop is not here? Yeah, the laptop is not here. car is not here. Oh, the car is not here. Some. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh oh, I just screwed it up. So, so anyway, the other alert. Yeah, that's actually better. I can see better. Okay, so let me get back to that. So that's the status. Every half an hour, it goes through the statuses. And again, eventually, what I'll do is I'll I'll turn off. Your OneDrive is uh, almost full. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so it's full. So uh, one of the things I'll do eventually, I'll I'll turn right, right now. I'm just testing stuff, so I, I just get all the statuses, no whether if they're no whether if they're good or bad. But ultimately, it'll be just be the status, like it'll say when the garage doors are left or the lights are on. But if the lights are on, off, it won't even say anything. So that's the goal. So the other alert. I have a question. Those statuses works with with any apps for the phone, for example. What do you mean? The tax. Does it exist an app to use the, the, the those tax to check for your Computer in, in, the, in the phone. Oh, you can do it. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah it, there is a uh, there is a, a program by uh, Microelectronics, I think it is. Okay. They have an app that you can use for it's Bluetooth Low Energy. It basically okay, just okay, pick, yeah. it just basically picks up Bluetooth. So I use that for testing to see if the, how far I can actually get. So it's like a, a a survey. So I use that for survey. But I but actually what's picking that up is is a uh, Raspberry Pi. And they have a, uh, they have a, it's a, it's, called, it's a BLE uh, library that's in that Raspberry Pi that allows you to actually do it because Raspberry Pi has Bluetooth Low Energy integrated in it, so so it works out. So the other thing, so again, the status is happening every half an hour. Basically, it tells me the tells me the time, tells me the date, and tells me the status. Now this alert actually, like if the garage door open, I'll just play it. That it? No. You hit you hear a beat first. It's, I just didn't get it synchronized. There it is. Hello. The date is Monday, July 8th, 2019 and the time now. is 345 PM. Sound. Sorry. Sorry guys. Take cancel that one. Cancel. Get out. Come here. There we go. This is this is there you go. There it is. Motion detected on bank deck. The battery level is 3.43 volts. So that's the one of them. So that's a sensor. So if the motion detected on the back, it'll, it'll warn you at that particular time if the mailbox is open. Then there's one more of this. Motion has been detected in the garage. The battery level is 3.34 volts. So on all the sensors that I have batteries in, uh, that a battery's in, it'll actually tell me what the voltage is at that point. Now I can also, of course, you guys know, I can change that and, and just not make it tell the voltage, just say, okay, you need to change your battery. But
But right now, just I mean, I'm amazed. Actually, I'm I'm really amazed that that's working so well. That these batteries went in there in February, and they're still at 3.4 something volts, and they starts off at 3.4 something volts. So so they're they're basically not even getting drained. So that again, that's and and the what the the, uh, the motion detector on the deck is. I mean, that thing's going off constantly. I have to shut it. I have to shut the voice off because it's. You know, you go out and grill, and it's going off. I don't move it. I don't shut it down or anything. I just leave it, let it go. So, but that's that. That was a that was a, a big triumph because I did several iterations before we I got to a point where, basically, I actually, no, that one play. Don't play again. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, so here's the so okay. Let's see the automation part. So you can't have a smart home without some. I mean, you can have sensors all over the place, but they got to do something. Right, I mean, they gotta do something. So this is the automation, and it says, it's gonna turn on the family room lights if the condition, if it's outside, it's dark outside, and also uh, motion is detected on the deck. So if I play this, you'll see, and it's just showing you what happens. And it's actually darker than what it seems. You know how a camera makes it look brighter than what it really is. So there's the motion detector. I just walk out to there. Up, oh. camera come back in, and presto, change the lights will come on. So, yeah. yeah, so that's you know again that's 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 one <laughs> automation, and the other one that I use a wires camera. This is no th this camera. Oh, the camera that I'm using to film this. Yeah, no, no, no. no. The oh no, it's not. That you're using to sense. The oh no, it's not even a camera. It's actually that. What's actually sensing it is that motion detector on the deck here i'll show it PIR. Yeah, that pir yeah the okay. PIR right, oh, all right right, right all there right. there it is it's right there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so that's but actually the, but the image we're seeing here is that off a wise camera uh no that's actually a uh it's like a it's a it's a knockoff of the uh What's that daggum thing? The ones you go GoPro. GoPro. Yeah, it's a knockoff of a GoPro. Some just something I ordered from China. <laughs> so, if, uh, but it works works pretty good. So anyway, the second automation is actually this is dark. This is actually outside of. I'm in my car and I'm outside. You'll see me pull away and I'm gonna speed it forward. I'm not gonna make you watch me drive around the block. But basically, this will show the automation, which is the condition is is that it's going to turn the, uh, the the driveway lights on and also the garage lights. If it's dark outside and, and the car goes from being away to being here, and it's again that's all programmed in. So I'm backing out of the driveway. And I'm going to go down on the street and I'm going to speed that up because it'll take forever. So I'm going to go down the street and oh, down the street. So I'm going, basically going around the block. I don't know, take a right hand turn, I'll take another right hand turn, and I'll go up the hill, and I'll take another right hand turn, and go up the hill, and I'll take a right hand turn, and I'm going to stop it right there. So if you look closer to the left, you'll see when I start to pull to the house, and since I make this turn, I'm the second house on the top of the hill. So right there, so my house on the left, you see my lights come on, hopefully it. Yep. And so, so that was sort of when I first started talking about that was sort of the whole dream of things that to, to be able to be that was one of the big things to be able to do is to be able to turn to have it actually do something not just you got the sensor so you go check the sensor and say oh wow my garage lights are all my my uh my lights are on in the basement but this is actually doing something that actually you know makes it maybe maybe a little safer for my wife and so I feel more comfortable when my wife comes home in the dark so so anyway that by the way, Leroy, you'll find this interesting. <laughs> One of the things that happens is, is while I was testing this, these it would go off at different. I mean, sometime it would think my car is gone, and it wasn't. Okay. And so I'd wake up in the morning, and the lights are all on. So I, I built, I created these this uh, these two uh, uh, topics, the MQTT topics, so I can t disable and enable the. Uh, you know, whether they come on or off. So I could turn it off while I'm testing and say, okay, I'll make sure you're not gonna come on and, and I'll get up in the morning and I, and I got these 300 watt, watt light bulbs outside that are been on all night, but it freaked me out. <laughs> so so my wife knows that, so she gets up and say, your light's on outside and you're on. <laughs> <laughs> she, she needles me right. 
Okay, so let's see, get to the end of this. Okay, so as I was telling you guys, I tried to standardize on much of what I, as much as I could. So everything that uses a battery actually uses this little uh, surface mount <coughs> box here. So if you don't, if I'm not using the battery, I use the, the full uh, 8266 MCU. This happens to be a, a lower device then, and I could have used something else, but it, it just turns out that actually worked. And this actually I ordered from some European co company. It took a while to get here. I think it was two thirty, almost uh, twenty nine bucks or something like that. And you guys saw the Sonos switches. I brought those in before. Raspberry Pi three uh, B plus. And I actually went out and got circuit boards made up, which again, and that's what I was telling you guys. I got the circuit boards made up so I can pop circuit. I can pop my processor in here. And it's actually made to fit in this box. So I can pop the process here and put any components here, put a few holes in the box, and I'm I'm ready, you know, and I'm ready to go. Keep and I, you gotta pay attention to this. Oh, I didn't I didn't print it, but this the boards cost for 30 boards, 18 bucks. It costs 19 bucks to ship it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the next time I order some, I order. 50 boards or something, you know, shipping price would be the same. <laughs> so, and then I, I got this the standard box and these, and these uh, like, uh, radius uh, rad beacons, and of course it, it, it changed. Then I, I used, most of the time doing programming, I went away from the standard Arduino IDE and, and went to like Visual Studio, and, and I actually had to spend some little money, I think it was like 200 bucks on this Visual Micro, and that's a plug into Visual Studio, which, which just made the debugging a little easier. It has some debugging capabilities that you don't get into in the green also. It just made it a little easier. And it also made it easier to copy code over and, and reuse code. So it made it a lot easier there. So, but let's see, I got two more slides and we are done guys. Okay, here's the thing I was telling you about that I, this is actually the top of my garage. So I built, so I bought that and, and it just basically goes over that, you know, the, the plug. And so I was able to use the uh, five volts coming out of here to supply power to the, uh, two, the, the two of the hubs that's in the garage. And this is actually in the basement here. So I needed, the, I needed at least two outlets already. And then I, I got two sensors down there that are plugged in as opposed to being able to, to use the uh, transformer, the wall transformer, it was, it was made so much easier. Yeah. So, so that's, let's see, so the audio feedback, I talked about using audio for, uh, validation what's next okay guys you know and I don't know if I'm gonna go back and do this or not but the whole goal was hooking all this up to Azure Microsoft Azure I probably gonna go play with it a little bit more but the big thing and you talked about it, uh, a little bit about Mike uh, on the integration into Alexa because I have it so that what I want to do is have Alexa give me the status so, so say, Alexa, what's the status be like before I go up to bed or something? And it'll say, okay, you left the garage door open or something like that, and, and she can give me the status. The water is flowing. Right. In the <laughs> yeah. The problem with Alexa, the only problem with Alexa to that point is that you, she's not, you have to ask her. So it's, if something's going wrong, she goes, hey, dummy, you know, the water's flow, flowing downstairs, you know, so it's, it, it's not going to do that. Unless you, what you could actually do is create, you know, you could do the IMAC and say, you know, Alexa, and it could trigger, you know. Yeah. But, but yeah. yeah, so, and then the over-air, I talked about the over-the-air, I want to definitely get into more to the over-the-air stuff. And one of the things I want to do is, in, is to create a water flow sensor. And this is... And my point is not necessarily to, to have it more work that I can hook it around the pipes or something so it knows when the water, when I go away, when we typically go away for vacation, which by the way, we're, we'll be going away in the next week, week and a half. I won't be here week and a half. Did you really you just shut it off? Why? See, the problem is I have plants. And the plants I have to water while yeah, I'm gone. Yeah. And so I put, I, I actually set a sprinkler up in the front and the back and I set them on timers. We replace them with cactus. <laughs> it's hard, they're hard to kill. <laughs> Thanks, Art. <laughs> and also, the other thing is the over the stove. Oh, that's all. I mean, that's, I'm sure we all think about that. Leaving the stove, walking out, leaving the stove on. So, 
I was thinking a hall of fame. You don't think you don't think about it? I don't think about yeah, it. Well, I do because <laughs> I cook breakfast in the morning and, and it's like all of a sudden, okay, maybe I didn't read a stone. Did I read that? Yeah, one? <laughs> yeah, I was like, did I read that stone one? So I so I was my thought thought was actually I was thinking about having some type of either hall effect sensor that you pick it up, you know, that's around the cables or some type of vibration sensor or a sensor maybe up we have a hood. How maybe about just a current sensor? That's well. That's a, yeah. But is it something you can do without having to un, you know to create something that? Uh, what well, What about just a heat sensor? Well, I, I, and I and I know it's just trying to put it. It's just like my. Uh, it's like where do I put it? Right. I mean that's the problem. I mean I can't put the heat sensor on the on the surface of the of the of the stove. I could put it. You know they have, they have an LED on there that determines that says that the uh, the stove's on. But I mean that's that's really bad. I mean, you, you think the bathroom sensor is aesthetically sensor? Yeah. What What about one of those infrared no contact sensors? What do, What are we sensing? What are you looking Heat. at? It's Heat. Infrared. It's Heat. like a tiny can with three legs. Yeah. 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 I've never played with them, so I'll, hey, yeah. I, I've I, got I, one. I, I don't buy you. Proportional to. Just that. I've got two. I've, yeah. I can bring one for you to play Wait, with. Just send me a spec on it. Just send me a spec yeah, for us. But yeah, that, that it's. I mean, it's a, like a, a single uh, single vision, single point. So it's it's not going to be broad right. temperature ranges, but you could do, you know, if it goes oh, above 20, ninety eight degrees, degrees or a hundred degrees or whatever. Your stove's on a separate circuit, right? Right, right. So you just sense the current. You know, and that's why I mean, I thought about that. Like a, they have a clip on meters, like a full clip like, on. Like an amber. Oh, like I know you don't have to do anything that crazy, but but. No, no, but. You, but they now have apparatus you can put in your breaker box that looks at each circuit. Look, any temperature sensor. And all you need to do is just look enough, at one circuit and determine whether there's current flowing in a circuit. Your stove, if we're talking a stove top for starters, right? It's not going to share that circuit with anything else. Right. That's true. It's going to be. I'm sorry. Yeah. I did that when I when I looked at my website when I looked at the website. Right. Can you put me up? Okay. Now, oh. can they art? Can those look at a threshold? For example, if you have a clock on sure, your stove, sure, you just set it. Well, yeah. If the you answer have a clock is yes. on your stove, so what is? I, I've seen the things that you can actually put on the breaker. You can actually put on the breaker. No, no, no. You you want to go behind the breaker panel and oh, and pick up one of the wires. Pick off one of the wires. Oh, there are devices. Right. The sense current. Right. It's like a fluke snap. You yeah. know, clamp. You know, clamp. Oh, yeah. But you yeah. want a threshold device. Right. Because you don't want it with when you've got two milliamps in there. You want it when it's got an amp. Right. Or whatever, and so you set the threshold, and and you can run that to an Arduino or right. any other switching yeah. device. That's the point. But. You, you sense that circuit, and your wife's not going to complain about what's behind the circuit. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. Okay. It, she wants to go to that basement, so then don't have to worry uh, about that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is, yeah. You, you get it out of sight. Well, there, that's the thermal. Sensor. Yeah, that's just a. Uh, we Put can't. it up in the hood. You got power up in the hood. Library doesn't want us to go to eBay, but that's a, it's just a little thermo. So you could get a couple of them. And that's what I was, yeah, yeah. That's, that may be the issue though, because you, you got, you have four burners. Now, is that going to pick up? Is it? Oh, no, it, it actually, it, uh, it's, if you read the specs, it's, like a, camera, but that's it's, it's a, a cone. It's yeah. like a cone, right? It's going to be probably what, 20 but degrees, 30 yeah, degrees, something, something like that. Like that. It, uh, it, it, what I what I was talk what I was talking about, it's a single point. It's not so you you can't pay an image. I, I, I made of a private with, with, with a right, with but a, it's still picking up so a metal pipe and uh, two servos to make a, ma a temperature yeah. map. He he made oh, with he made a heat map. You made a heat map. <laughs> he made a heat map with a single one by by using a therm. Uh, uh, servos and oh, so moving it, actually moving it. You're actually moving it. Yeah, uh, they're like scanning. Yeah. <laughs> so you did a raster scan of yeah. But but that's uh -oh. not a. It's like a single point, right? 
So maybe, and it's I two C. Oh, okay, right. So I know you can use two of them with no problem. I don't know if you could use four with no problem, but you can play with it right. because you, you have temperature of your house in several points. Yeah. Okay. But you can have a, a temperature sensor close to the close to the stove. To the stove, and if the temperature is four degrees up or something, you right. say okay. So oh, you can put it. I can get it close to the stove. That's not a problem. Like I, I, mean, I can hide it. Up, I mean, I can hide it above it. The I rest of the house. Those, those it. things it's work on. really yeah. well. Okay. Flat surface. Are we done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim, yeah. yeah. yeah, you have a Moto G. I have replaced that. that no, oh, that's an E. You have Good that's Lord, e. we are e. done. Yeah. Right. Okay, everybody, we're done. <laughs> <laughs>